This isn't Hollywood magic, it's hard work and precision. In the previous video, we spoke about the different type of equipment we use on set when we're filming. So today's video is going to be about the role of each crew member and how they will use the equipment to get the best results possible in preparation for post-production. We'll be capping off the video by talking about some of the challenges that might come up during a shoot. Hello, I'm Michael Wolf and I'm an award-winning actor and director and I lead the multi-award-winning tailor-made video production company, United Wolf's Productions. Let's talk about the production process and specifically the crew and how they use the equipment. As with anything that involves a group effort, whether it be in business or in filmmaking, there needs to be someone that sets the vision for everyone to chase. This responsibility falls onto the director. This is, arguably, the most important position held by an individual on set, because he has to take into account many different aspects of the production process and help guide the crew and client to the final destination everyone agreed upon during pre-production. Simply put, musicians play their instruments, I play the orchestra. Thank you, Steve Jobs. Aside from setting the vision for the entire production, the director has many other responsibilities. Let's start with staging, which is to stage the area in such a way that the focus of the shot is on the subject, whether it be a person or a product they're wanting to promote. This is to highlight their importance to the viewer within the context of the video. In simple terms, this determines where everything is when the camera is recording. Whether it be the furniture, props and even the clients themselves, whether they're talking in an interview or performing the tasks they ordinarily would be when they're working. When choreographed properly, the video is then able to showcase effectively who the client is, what they do and what they represent. This is an incredibly important step to take into consideration because poor staging can lead to confusion in the final video, obfuscating the intention and overall message while conveying a sloppiness in the production value, all of which can hurt. Not only the perception of the crew's ability hurting their future prospects, but crucially also the reputation of the client that they're representing. Once the staging is finalized, the director has to, well, direct. Though rather than composing the background to fit into the vision of the video, the task is to make sure that the crew and the client are all conducting themselves in a way that leads to producing the best material possible. While it can sound similar to staging, to differentiate, staging is how everything is placed on the frame of the camera, while directing is how the client, the crew and the environment all interact with each other. This could be the clients going about their work in an ordinary day, the types of questions they answer when they being interviewed or even the way they present themselves when they're being filmed. This is all in aid of showcasing them in as representative a manner as possible to highlight their authenticity and what they stand for. This final responsibility of the director is to carry the vision of the project from beginning to end, making sure the entire production is moving forward in the direction it needs to in order to fulfill the purpose originally agreed up by the crew and the client. Keeping track of all these different aspects all at the same time, navigating through it all and keeping the set running smooth is a difficult task at the best of times. And to do it well, it requires an individual of great patience, people skills and technical ability. Now the direction is out of the way, let's move on to the camera operator who, based on the requirements of the scene, selects the camera and gear that is most appropriate for the shot. For example, if it is for an aerial shot, it would be the drone. And if it is an interior shoot, it would be, in our case, the Sony A7 series and its lenses. Once the camera is selected, it has to be combined with the appropriate lens, as spoken about in the previous video. Depending on the type of lens, the camera operator would be able to capture a wide array of shots all with a different look and feel, and it is by working together with the director that they would be able to figure out what types of shots are needed for this video, whether it is to showcase the location or highlight the individuals that are participating in the video. With techniques derived from and learned as a result from cinema and filmmaking, reflecting the team's background in producing award-winning short films, the quality of the shots are further maximized. A few examples of the types of shots used include medium shots that focus on the individual being filmed from the waist upwards, medium close-ups which are from the chest up, close-ups that usually cover the face of the individual that is focused on, and wide shots enabling the crew to capture a large portion of an area to showcase a sense of scale within the location. 
While the camera is capable of being dynamic in its own right, it is not enough for it to be able to stand out on its own. This is where the lighting comes in. Whether it be a simple three-point lighting system or something a little more cinematic, adding to the visual flair that would help the video stand out from the usual shots in the same area of the market the client wishes to enter. When such visuals are shown, it creates the sense of competence from the part of the client to the viewer. After all, the quality of what you sell needs to match the quality of how you sell it, otherwise your viewers won't trust you. That said, it is not as simple as placing a set of lights on the ground and pointing it at the subject. There has to be experience and knowledge on the part of the crew to have the right brightness and the appropriate color tone and temperature to have the frame be as high quality as it can be. Alternatively, if the lights are not utilized in a manner that is appropriate, it would have the opposite effects of actively degrading the visual quality of the frame. Accompanying the visuals is the sound the final cog that fits into the production process. Depending on what is needed, it can be incredibly flexible to capture. However, it can be just as easy to ruin. As such, there needs to be a fine balance on how to record sound effectively while on set. This is an important responsibility as there is no substitute for bad sound. Depending on the type of material being recorded, there is the possibility of recording the audio using the lavalier mics and the shotgun mics on top of the camera or the ones on the boom pole so that there are different options for the editor to use during post-production. This flexibility in using equipment will allow for more backups on the off chance that the recordings are not up to the expected standard. Something that the boom operator or the individual who is in charge of sound has to be aware of is the area that is being captured by the camera. To be present in the location but also being invisible so that he or she is capable of getting the audio to the best of their ability in as clean of a way as possible without getting in the way of the crew and the client. With all that said, there are challenges that may come about on set that may have been unforeseen. Well, here are a few. For example, noise from a source that is beyond your control and how to mitigate it can be quite the task. The crew member recording sound could try to mitigate its effects, try to adjust the balancing in the equipment itself. Alternatively, they could move to a different location where the noise is not as prominent, so it can be worked around, using the shooting time to the maximum and finding a way around the problem. If all else fails, you could also ADR the sound, also stands for Audio Digital Replacement. There are then delays that could come about as a result of cancellations, illness and terrible traffic. When such things arise, in order to uh, mitigate them, it is always best to book in more time than the bare minimum and risk finishing early so that the crew and the client are not pressed for time. When there are cancellations and individuals unable to attend due to illness, it is prudent to have additional people participate on the day of the shoot so that there would be enough people on set to work with and record enough footage to work around during post-production. These are some of the responsibilities the crew has, while tackling a couple of the biggest problems that come up most commonly during the shoot. Let us know what problems you have encountered and how you solve them in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe for more. Next up, we'll be focusing on the post-production process, where I will be replaced by my much more strategically placed business partner. I've been Michael Wolf from United Boost Productions. Welcome to the Wolfpack.